Welcome to Shaw TV's coverage of the 2017 Manitoba flood. We're standing in Carmen, Manitoba, a town recently hit hard by ice jams. This is the Boyne River right over here. Uh, residents say it's normally a small river, but it was up quite high just a few days ago. It's gone down significantly since, but there were water levels not seen here in quite a while thanks to the ice jams and the flood. Now there are other areas around the province as well that have been hit by flooding. So we're gonna give you a recap of what's happened so far. But first, let's hear from the province and see what they have to say heading into the weekend. The Assiniboine and areas in the west and south are now being closely watched. Flows in the Assiniboine River are continuing to rise. As of this morning, flow on the Portage Diversion channel is about 18,700 CFS and flows in the Assiniboine River downstream of the diversion have been increased to about 9,000 CFS. It is planned that flow on the Assiniboine downstream of the diversion will reach 15,000 CFS as early as April 10th. On the Red River, water levels at James Avenue were measured at 18.2 feet this morning and with the floodway in operation, water levels at James Avenue are expected to remain around 18 feet for the next week as flows on the Red River recede and flows on the Assiniboine River start to increase. It's important that, uh, to note that based on natural Red River flow at James Avenue, this uh, flood event uh, corresponds to about a 1 in 13 year flood frequency event and with the natural James Avenue peak level without the benefit of the floodway and other uh, flood protection measures would have been 26.6 feet. We're now at 291 evacuees as of 10 o'clock this morning and, and that's a dynamic number. Um, all but six of them are from First Nations. There are 14, or sorry, 15 states of local emergency, um, mostly in the southwest and the Assiniboine, or sorry, the Red River uh, and, uh, and uh, Pembina River area. Uh, 2011 and 2014, uh, there was 18,000 CFS uh, down the lower Assiniboine River. Uh, at the current forecast, we're projecting 15,000 CFS, uh, so this is uh, well within, uh, uh, certainly within the dike um, elevations. <laughs> Well, the RM of Grey is one of several that's been under state of emergency in the last little while. Joining us now is the Reeve of the area, Raymond Fransman. Raymond, thanks for joining us. Uh, first of all, for those who don't know the RM of Grey, uh, where does the area kind of span? It uh, starts just east of uh, Fanestal, Manitoba, and heads uh, just west of St. Claude. 360 square miles, 10 townships. So. When would you say this started to become a bit of an issue? How, how long ago was it when you started to realize we may have some issues here? Uh, Friday okay. <laughs> of last week, yes. Was it expected at all? Did you think we could cut, get to this point or did it kind of come out of nowhere? Well, it didn't come out of nowhere, but we, we didn't expect it to be this bad. Well, two weeks ago when we were scouting around, we thought that uh, things were looking a little favorable. Uh, not, uh, we knew we were going to have some water, uh, but we did not believe we were going to have water to this extent. Okay. Where is all this water really coming from? What is causing a lot of this flooding in the area? Well, it's a fairly large area that's, uh, that drains into a certain, certain drain area. You know, like right here, we're at like the neck of a funnel. There's uh, all the water that's in this drainage area will end up trying to get through here and hence why we've lost this road as well. Um, some of our water even comes from neighboring municipalities to the west and uh, south. So we have uh, water from south uh, or Norfolk Treehern and a little bit from the Arm of Dufferin as well. So. You said roads were kind of your biggest issue. How many roads are you dealing with right now that have been flooded and need to get kind of worked on? We have uh, 40, 49 sites that need to be worked on and we have 31 road closures so far. Uh, so there's a lot of work ahead to be done. Oh, for sure. Uh, when we say an area is in a state of emergency, what exactly does that mean when you're under a state of emergency? Well, it allows, it allows the municipality to, uh, if they require to go on private land, uh, to fix a problem or move water in a different direction, we're allowed to do that. If we don't declare that state of emergency, we, we don't have that authority. Okay. So. Yeah. 
We're just on Highway 2 now, just outside of Elm Creek. When you drive west down Highway 2, a lot of fields seem to be affected. Is there a lot of that going on when you drive down Highway 2? Uh, could you estimate how many fields look to be almost completely underwater? Oh, that's 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 quite typical. Uh, it, when you get that close to the drainage, the main drains, of course, you get water pooling right next to them. So when you drive three miles, four miles away from that drain, it's not as bad. But we still have a fair amount of water to come, and uh, we're, uh, we, there was some rain in the forecast, and I'm, I'm really glad that they have taken that out for now, for Saturday, because we cannot have uh, any amount, substantial amount of rain at this time. So. No. And what are you looking at as things go on here? What's kind of the worry going forward? And when do you think things can kind of get back to normal and you can maybe get out of that state of emergency? What's your best guess? Well, the state of emergency is good for 30 days and we're not prepared at this time to, uh, to withdraw it. Uh, we still, we're over, we believe we're over the hump as far as the flooding goes. And uh, in a couple more days, we hope to be able to shut down. We still have some pumps operating. And then the big job comes in trying to get these roads back into shape and that is going to take some time and so we can get our school buses back and uh, and then hopefully the process will the province will announce uh, some disaster financial assistance because this is very costly we're expecting well over a million dollars of damage in the arm of gray could approach as high as two so all right okay raymond fransman thank you so much for the time This was the scene in Carmen, Manitoba earlier this week, the first major flood to hit the town since 1979. Now a $6 million diversion system was built in 1991 that kept the town flood free until this spring, but the ice jams kept water in the diversion from moving away from town. Now since then, water levels have dropped drastically, which Carmen resident Doreen is happy to see. She lives right beside the Boyne River. We were out on Saturday night and uh, when we came home, I told my husband, the moon is shining and I think the water is coming up onto the grass. He said, no way. In the morning, we got up and it's all the way past the tree around the house. Well, this was all underwater and it was at least, uh, at least two, three feet on the other side of that big tree and all around there. It, it was scary, it was very scary. Usually when we came here, you couldn't even see the water running on the river. You know, it was so low this year, but it was ice jam. It was an ice jam. Five First Nations had to be evacuated in Manitoba throughout the week, including the Long Plain First Nation, Pegwas First Nation, Sioux Valley Dakota Nation, Fisher River Cree Nation, and the Kanapawakpa Dakota First Nation. Here's more on the situation in Long Plain from Chief Dennis Meeches. He tells us how many people have been evacuated and explains how some evacuees are facing the same scenario that they faced in the summer when a tornado hit the area. When you had uh, the spring thaw and uh, overland flooding with uh, a residential neighborhood in Long Plain, uh, Rodeo Bay and Rodeo Drive, uh, we had a situation there where a young uh, person was needed to be uh, taken to the Portage General Hospital and the ambulance could not get in there so they had to uh, lift the young person um, uh, to take him to the provincial road. So the decision was made to just uh, uh, declare the local state of emergency for that area. I think uh, close to, uh, last I heard there's 52 but I think it's a little bit higher than that. Um, and uh, this evacuation will be short term. Uh, we are taking steps to address the, uh, the, um, the road itself. And uh, so we're thinking, you know, by next week, early next week, uh, by next week, people should be back home in that residential neighborhood. It's a difficult thing for them, you know, just to be uprooted again for, uh, you know, from their homes. And uh, I, I, I can say they're very resilient, the families there, and I know it's a bit of a struggle for them, but they recognize. Well, the attention has been turned now to the rising Assiniboine River. Here are some pictures now courtesy of Monica Griffiths. Thanks to her for submitting these to our Facebook page. 
Her house is located just seven miles west of Eli. She says this is nearly their backyard. They're just 50 feet away from the Assiniboine on the south side of the river. Now, a flood watch remains in effect for the area between Portage La Prairie and Headingley, and you heard earlier in the bulletin that flows will be increased over the weekend and could be at 15,000 CFS as early as Monday. Here's a look at the Portage diversion from earlier this week. The diversion is located just west of Portage La Prairie, and it diverts water from the Assiniboine River northward into Lake Manitoba. So it's a very important flood fighting tool, especially in times like these. It's a 29 kilometer long diversion channel providing flood protection to the city of Winnipeg and to the communities along the lower Assiniboine, the RMs of Portage, Cartier, St. Francois, Xavier, and Headingley. And here's how the Assiniboine was looking at the Long Plain First Nation on Tuesday. Shaw TV would like to hear from you. What is the flooding like in your area? Send us your stories and photos to our Shaw TV Winnipeg Facebook page or give us a call at 204-480-3500 and leave a voicemail. Your stories or photos could be featured in our flood coverage this spring.